All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending this webinar from the State Library of Florida in collaboration with the Bureau of Library Development. We, uh, today, we will be covering Social Work Reference Center, which is an electronic information resource developed by social workers for social workers, which covers a wide variety of topics, including clinical social work, aging, adolescent health, and much more. You have access to this database, along with many others, with your state library card. So let's investigate how to use it. I am your presenter. My name is Isabella Fulmar. As Florida Collection and Outreach Librarian for the State Library, my duties include reference services, collection development for the Florida Collection, and planning of outreach activities such as this webinar. Okay, so uh, throughout the course of the presentation today, we'll be covering the following topics. First, we'll touch on uh, the services that the State Library provides to state employees. Then we'll go through a thorough tutorial of the Social Work Reference Center, and we'll close out with a brief reminder about um, the desktop delivery and current alert services that the State Library offers. So, for you as a state employee, the State Library offers specialized research assistance, and this is um, available via phone and email currently. Currently, we are close to the public for public health, um, due to public health concerns, but ordinarily, we would be open in person for you to visit and use our collections in person um, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30. Um, but if there's a specific book or article you're looking for, you can give us a call. I'll have the contact information at the end. Um, we have a staff of trained librarians that can help you find whatever information you need for your projects. Um, we also offer an interlibrary loan service. So if there is a book you're looking for, um, but you don't, you can't find it at the public library and you can't find it at the state library, we can obtain a copy of almost anything for you um, through interlibrary loan um, through our Cooperative of Florida uh, Libraries. We also offer a table of contents service, um, which basically involves subscriptions to various periodicals, both professional titles and more um, general interest titles such as Smithsonian and Scientific American um, that you can obtain uh, articles from via email just by letting us know which articles you're interested in once you sign up to receive the table of contents um, via email from us weekly. Um, I'll show you how to access that and sign up for that towards the end. Um, we also offer a wide variety of electronic databases, um, Social Work Reference Center being one of them. And lastly, we offer on-demand scanning of library documents remotely. So if you're working from home but you need access to a state publication, um, we can usually get that scan and send over to you. Just for your information, though the main database we'll cover today is Social Work Reference Center, I just have a quick note about another database which may be of interest to those in the social work profession. Um, with your state library card, you have access to JSTOR through our electronic databases page, which includes access to social work journals such as the Journal of the Society for Social Work and Research, um, the Journal of Social Work and Research, the Journal of Comparative Family Studies, Social Work, and many others. So just FYI. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you how you can access our electronic databases page. As Casey mentioned to you earlier, um, we do offer, we are going to send out these slides to you um, following the conclusion of the presentation. Um, so you don't need to feel obligated to write any of this information down or you know make note of the links. You'll have access to that information down the line. Um, but below you see the URL um, of our services for state employees page. You can access our electronic databases page through there. You'll just hit search our databases and you'll pr be presented with our electronic databases homepage here to the right. After which you'll scroll down to find Social Work Reference Center. And when you click that, you'll be prompted to sign in with your State Library of Florida account. You'll just need your full 
uh, state library card number and your PIN. And your PIN number is going to be the last four digits, digits of the phone number that we have on file for you. It's usually the last four digits of your work phone number. So that being said, I'll go ahead and um, open up the Social Work Reference Center page and we'll do, start our tutorial of the database itself. And we will start by running a basic search in SWRC. Okay, so here is the landing page. You'll see in the center carousel a number of featured quick lessons and care sheets on subjects ranging from intimate partner violence to father-child relations. At the bottom, you'll see links to materials on trending topics within the database divided up under categories such as aging, diversity, inequity, mental health and children, and youth and families. To the right, you can search by resource type. There are links to drug information, practice and skill sheets, patient education, continuing education, and more. Just to give the whole database a spin, let's try a general keyword search for post-traumatic stress disorder. And it actually already recognizes what we're going to search for. It's that second result. And so that search pulled up a variety of resources relating to PTSD and a range of populations. To the left, you'll see that there are limiters so that you can sort the resources by publication date as well as by source type. The types of sources listed here are guidelines, quick lessons, continuing education, evidence-based care sheets, and patient education sheets. I'll go into more detail about each of these um, a little bit further down the line. But for now, let's try the first result, which is a quick lesson. Okay, so here we have the quick lesson relating to PTSD in military personnel and veterans. At the top, we have a description of the condition. And then we have some statistics under facts and figures down here about how many people are affected by this condition. When we scroll down, we find some information about the risk factors for PTSD, as well as information about the signs and symptoms of the condition. We find information about assessing the client for the condition and information about treatment and intervention. And when we continue to scroll down, we find laws and regulations relating to the condition and information about additional organizations which provide services and other resources. In this case, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs Center for PTSD and the National Institute of Mental Health. Notably, we also have the red flag section. This red flag section denotes certain information that is critical to know about the condition for the safety of the client. So, for instance, in the case of PTSD, one of the red flags is a note that social workers should take necessary steps to ensure a client's regular attendance, as it is typical for veterans to attend one or two sessions and not return. Another red flag list in here notes that explosive behaviors are more common among those whose traumas were experienced during military service. So the red flag section just features important information to know um, about the condition as it affects or manifests within the particular population being examined. And at the bottom, we have discharge planning information, as well as a very robust list of services, or sorry, references. So you uh, can also just cut right to this list of authoritative sources here, many of which are linked. For the resources not li linked here, Feel free to request those with our article request form from the State Library or through Flynn Share It, which I'll touch on later. Additional information from social work journals can also be found through JSTOR, as I mentioned previously. Okay. So now let's search for some general information about areas of practice within the social work profession and also find some helpful information to brush up on those skill sets. So we'll return to the home page.
And then, since we are looking into the practice and skills section from the home page, we'll navigate to that on the left menu here. And since I believe a number of you who signed up are um, employed through the Department of Children and Families, which does a lot of work with um, child welfare investigation, I'm going to select the first result um, relevant to that line of work. Um, and the topic here is child abuse reporting. As you can see, there are a number of skill sheets available here, and they're arranged alphabetically, but they're also searchable. So I'll click that first result. Okay, so here is the uh, practice and skills page for child maltreatment reporting in the United States. We see off to the left-hand side that we can jump to related information, such as quick lessons, the evidence-based care sheet, and continuing education modules. In the center of the catalog record for this page, we see a direct link to the CE module on this topic. I'll get into the continuing education courses a bit later in the presentation. So similar to the quick lessons page that we saw before, we have some statistical information available to us about maltreatment reporting, and we have information about the desired outcome of reporting. We also have some general information about mandatory reporting in the United States. It's important to note that Florida's laws surrounding mandatory reporting are different from other states' laws, and state-specific information is not included in this database, though a general note that mandatory reporting varies by state is included in the module. So always check state-specific state regu regulations through the Florida statutes, laws of Florida, and administrative code rules, as uh, the Social Work Reference Center is more of a general source of information for areas of social work practice in the United States. When we scroll down, we find some, here's that note about the reporting. Um, reporting in the United States. When we scroll down, we have some additional information about social work responsibilities with regard to reporting maltreatment in the U.S. And like we had in the quick lesson before, we have information about interventions. Here we have that inter intervention information. And scrolling to the bottom, we have our familiar red flag section. Um, including that statement about universal mandated reporting, as I mentioned earlier. We also have our list of references further down, which in this case includes some references to legal resources. And uh, the State Library, in, a, in addition to our main location, which is in the RA Gray Building, we also have a, a branch of our library, which is located in the Capitol, and that's our law library. So if you're searching for legal information, um, our main branch where I'm located typically does have the Florida statutes and um, uh, laws of Florida, sub many legal resources, but um, <clears throat> additional legal resources, including continuing legal education, that kind of thing, can be found at our Capital Branch Library um, should you need to access any legal resources through the course of your research. Okay, so now let's learn how to look up diseases and conditions in Social Work Reference Center. Go back to the home page. And again, we'll go to the left-hand menu on the landing page and select diseases and conditions. And for the mental health professionals joining us today, um, for this example, I'll search the diseases and conditions section for information about bipolar disorder as an example. Again, you can click through the pages when they are sorted alphabetically, or you can run a keyword search for the specific um, condition you are searching for. So, I'm going to go to B for bipolar disorder. And then I'm going to select bipolar disorder in women. And this takes me to an evidence-based care sheet. The information included in the care sheet is divided into a few categories. 
what we know about the disorder, what we can do in terms of treatment, information from the DSM-5, and again, the references should you wish to go straight to those original authoritative sources of information on which this care sheet is based. Okay. But what if, rather than brushing up on this information yourself, you were instead trying to print up some information for a patient or client? Instead, you would go to the landing page, and you would click Patient Education, then search for Bipolar Disorder. So we'll return to that left menu, select Patient Education, and then select Bipolar Disorder. That would bring you to this patient information page, which includes definitional information about the disorder here at the top, causes if known, and you'll see that off to the left-hand side you can click straight to information about symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, medications, excuse me, different forms of therapy and prevention methods, if there are any. Scrolling down, here are those risk factors and the symptoms listed out. Further down, you'll find the diagnosis information for the patient. This features information that they can bring to their next general physician's appointment or just keep on file for their records. And as mentioned, here's that information about medications and therapy options. Okay. So what if your patient had, or your client had specific questions about a medication that they needed to take for bipolar disorder. Let's search for drug information for them relating to lithium as an example. So we will go off to the side here, that left-hand menu, and hit drugs for the drug information. And that brings us to a drug information page like the one we see here. We have a warning about, oops, just one moment. Let me type it in. Okay, here we have our uh, lithium information page. We have a warning about toxicity right here under the boxed warning alert, um, since that's some very important information to be aware of. And to the left, we see the other contents, which we can skip to, such as uses, cautions, advice to patients, and more. The drug information pages are quite lengthy and very dense with information. So we'll have um, more information about the disorders that the drug treats and some information about dosage and administration as we scroll down. And as we scroll down further, we get some information about warnings and precautions. Further down, you'll find some information about um, drug interaction. And further down, you'll find information about advice to patients um, and information about preparations. And then lastly, as we've seen before, each of these has um, a full list of references should you need to cut to that authoritative original source of information. So let's move on. Real quickly here, I will go over assessment tools offered through the Social Work Reference Center. Unfortunately, the tools themselves, questionnaires for example, are not available through SWRC. Instead, what the database has to offer are citations of the tools. 
So these include information about the tool in question, when it was developed and by whom, what population it's used for, for example, children, adolescents, adults, etc., what the rights are surrounding the tool, and where you can access it. Presumably, these tools are not directly available through the database because many of them are under copyright, but the contact information provided shows you how, who to contact in order to access the tool. So to the left-hand side, we'll hit Assessment Tools. And let's select Psychological Tests. And let's try. For example, just one moment. We can select the geriatric depression scale as an example. And if you were to hit this PDF of full text, um, we don't gain access to the instrument itself. We get rather instead um, information about the tool, what it's used to measure, um, the methodology, how many questions are involved, and how to obtain it. Here we have um, information about the original developers and a citation of the journal that it appeared in. So if you provided this citation to us, for example, um, if you come across a, a journal citation in your research and you need access to this particular information, you can use our article request form to um, gain a copy of that particular article or whatever it may be. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how to get to that later in the presentation. So let's go ahead and check out legislative information in Social Work Reference Center. We'll return to the landing page. And we'll select current legislation on the left hand side. And the link to current Legislation on the landing page simply takes you directly to the website of the National Association of Social Workers, which tracks legislative developments impacting social workers and their clients. Okay, so let's return to the main page and we'll go ahead and get into the continuing education modules that are available within Social Work Reference Center. So we'll select Continue Education. Okay. And then I mentioned earlier, um, we went through, I believe, the quick lesson about uh, child abuse reporting in the United States. So, and I mentioned we would review the Continue Education module that corresponds to that. So let's give that a spin. And it recognizes me because I've signed in before, but if you don't already have an um, account through CINAHL Education, then it'll prompt you to create one and send you an email for you to confirm your account. Um, so let's just review. I'm going to quickly go over accredi uh, the um, accreditation information for CINAHL Education. And... Um, Social Work Reference Center generally. So just one second. So just a note about accreditation. Send all information centers, uh, information systems which developed Social Work Reference Center is approved to offer social work and continue education by the Association of Social Work Boards and the Association of Social Work Boards is listed as one of Florida's licensed providers by the Florida Board of Licensed Clinical Social Workers. So before taking these modules, please contact the Florida Board 
of licensed clinical social workers to determine course approval for continuing education credits as not all courses through SWRC are ASWB approved. Additionally, if you're using these modules for professional development rather than continuing education for licensure, um, please contact your supervisor to ensure that these modules will suit your professional development requirements under your performance plan. Before you take the test, at the end of each of these CE modules, you'll be asked to enter some personal information so that the course can be recorded in CE Broker. Um, and we have some information about the developers of Social Work Reference Center. Um, they're all licensed clinical social workers. Um, but here's kind of a quick list of some of the ASWB approved courses. And um, as you see here, there, there are some on a wide variety of topics. So um, there's a, a continuing education model module on elder abuse, um, which might be of interest to those working in the Department of Elder Affairs um, who work in the elder abuse prevention program area. Um, probationary officers within DJJ might find the CE module for complex trauma in children and adolescents helpful in their practice. So there's really a wide variety of modules applicable to different areas of practice within social work that are offered through the Social Work Reference Center. Okay, so let's go ahead and access those modules. Let's scroll back to the top. So I'll go and get back to my original module on child maltreatment reporting. And here's the landing page for that CE module. At the bottom, we have a link. At the very bottom, we have a link to proceed. Hold on one moment. This is actually the module information. We have an abstract here, um, information about the desired outcomes of reporting, facts and figures about, um, about the subject, what you need to know before reporting child maltreatment in the United States. As you'll see, it really does look a lot like the previous units that we've seen, the quick lessons and the care sheets um, and the practice and skill sheets, things of this nature, even down to the red flag section. Um, and again, we have that list of references at the bottom. So once you've revert, reviewed all of this information in your module, I strongly suggest that you take the um, interactive review, and that's at this, um, not the far right corner, but just one over, interactive review. And this is just a practice test to test your knowledge before taking the actual test. And you can get, if you take the practice test, you can get feedback on what you're learning while you're learning it, and you can test to make sure that you're ready for the final test. Um, the final test in this far right corner is time restricted and you get limited attempts. So if you can practice with the practice test and make sure you have all the information down, you'll know that you're prepared going into the final one, which is timed. And once you know that you are prepared for that test, you'll just click take test in the far right and you'll have to fill out the necessary fields um, in order to receive credit and CE broker. So you'll enter your professional title, your position, institution where you work, your profession, all this information to get listed in CE broker. And then you'll only have about an hour to take the test and you have two attempts available. Okay, so let me return to my slides here. So I'll just give you a brief reminder of the desktop delivery and current alert services that we offer. 
Um, I mentioned earlier that if there's a book that you are searching for um, that is not at your local library and we don't have it at the State Library in our physical hold holdings, we can get it for you through um, this library co cooperative. Um, we've, we've recently launched Flynn Share It, which is our new interlibrary loan system. Um, and through this service, you can uh, search for books, CDs, DVDs, and more from libraries ac across Florida and have these materials delivered to your office. Or if you're a teleworking, currently we can get it delivered to your home office. So just thought I would plug that new feature for you. It might be helpful to you in your, in your research. And I mentioned also with the assessment tools or for the references section when you're going through Social Work Reference Center, if you come across a citation that isn't linked to the original source um, and you need us to find an article for you um, from that citation, you can just fill out um, our article request form. The link is at the bottom and that'll be included when I get the slides to you. Um, yeah, you can just take any any journal citation that you come across in Social Work Reference Center or in any of the databases um, that you're using and request it through this form from us and we'll get it through ILL for you. Okay, and then I briefly mentioned earlier our table of contents service. I will explain that a little bit in more detail. Um, so we subscribe at the State Library to a number of periodicals, which may be of interest to those in the social work profession. If you're a probationary or parole officer, we have Corrections Today, um, a professional periodical within your line of work. And for mental health professionals, we subscribe to Psychology Today. Um, these are free with free to access with your State Library card, so you can save yourself the subscription. Basically, you just Check the box next to any periodical you're interested in subscribing to, and we will, when we get a new issue in, scan the table of contents and send it to you so that you can reply back and let us know any articles you're interested in reading, and we can then scan those articles and send them to you. And it's really, even though we do subscribe to a number of professional titles like Corrections Today and Psychology Today, we also subscribe to a lot of general interest type publications such as The New Yorker or Time Magazine. Um, so it's just a, a great way to access this information um, via email and for free with your State Library card. And lastly, don't forget to sign up for current alerts through our website, links at the bottom. You can get uh, subject alerts for particular topics within the practice of social work through our electronic databases so that you'll be notified when new articles relevant to your area of interest or practice become available. So that way you don't have to keep searching for the same things over and over um, if you just place a, a current alert, sign up for current alerts on a given subject. it'll. Uh, you will receive email alerts when uh, new articles are published and posted pertaining to your line of work. And none of this is possible with your state, without your state library card. Um, so if you don't have one already, please sign up for a state library card today. And here's that form, library card sign up form. Oops. So thank you so much for attending. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, or if you think of anything later, you can feel free to contact us. Um, the email address provided is our general email for our reference staff. So that's a team of research librarians who are available throughout the week to help you find whatever you need when you're working on your projects. Um, and then that phone number provided is our reference line if you need to speak with someone over the phone. All right. Do we have any questions? Just as a reminder, if you would like to be unmuted, you can push that hand raised button and we will get you unmuted.
All right. Hearing no questions, I just thank you again for attending. And um, if you have any questions down the line, feel free to give me a call or um, reach out via email at info at dos.myflorida.com. And actually, I am seeing a question for Katrina Rivers. Yes, we do have a similar database for nurses, and we actually upgraded it this year. It's called Nursing Reference Center Plus. It is developed by the same publisher, EBSCO. So they are arranged almost identically, um, or that the Nursing Reference Center Plus and Social Work Reference Center are um, designed very in a very similar manner. And you can access Nursing Reference Center Plus through our electronic databases page as well. Um, we upgraded our subscription in July, I believe, um, but we have also a similar tutorial to the one you just saw for Nursing Reference Center uh, through our YouTube page, the State Library's YouTube page, if you'd like to get a run through of how that database works. Thank you all. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your kind words and for your attention. I really appreciate it, and don't be a stranger. Let me know if I can help you find anything.